Amen. Well, today I want to bring you a truth talk, asking the question, what does the Bible say about eliminating college debt? While on the campaign trail, President Biden frequently promised college debt reduction. Although some steps have been taken to reform debt assistance programs through the federal government, there has not been a sweeping college debt reduction policy that's that's come forward yet. It's on the news. You've been hearing about it. Many will argue in the favor of college reduction for several reasons. First, they claim that student debt has delayed thousands of students' lives because they have such debt hanging over them. Second, not all college grads are able to secure employment that reflects their degree and the cost of their degree. Third, student loan reduction could help reduce some racial wealth gaps that exist between black and Hispanic communities. So there's many arguments. And then the reality is there's just a lot of Americans that have college debt and they like to see it go away. So there is arguments that are in favor of this. And so um, as we come to this subject, we must realize there's a lot of implications, both good and bad, from this decision of either way it goes. Um, Good and bad can come from debt reduction to individuals and families, but the big question still remains, what does God say about a government eliminating or greatly reducing college debt? Let me give you several truths. Truth number one is that all debt is bondage. Proverbs 22 and verse 7 says, Just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. Smart debt is not ethically wrong. Debt that is on property or on an asset that will appreciate with value. That's not wrong. However, even with smart debt, it is a burden that is upon the borrower. So while in debt, one is clearly under obligations. Students that choose educational debt will experience the bondage in their lives for many years to come. That is what scripture teaches. Scripture warns everyone before they choose to take on debt that they will be under that weight and the weight of monthly payments for years to come. So the scripture teaches us that debt, all debt is bondage. Truth number two is that all debt is a choice. Nobody's forcing students to go to college. Students should be cautious to go to college because of the debt they incur. College debt without purpose is a choice to incur debt without any clear return on investment. What we choose, we are responsible for. Scripture could not be more straightforward about personal responsibility, that all debt is a choice. Romans 13 and verse 8 speaks to the one that chose debt. Let no debt remain outstanding. We're responsible to pay what we owe. Romans 13 and verse 7 commands us, give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, then pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. If a monthly payment, then a monthly payment, right? A Christian understands these things and faithfully pays back what he or she owes, knowing that it's a mark of godliness. It's the wicked that don't repay. Psalm 37 verse 21 says, the wicked borrow and never repay, but the godly are generous givers. So number one, all debt is bondage. Number two, all debt is a choice. Truth number three is all debt must be calculated. Scripture expects people to be well thought out in their financial endeavors. Luke 14 verse 28 tells us, don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough money to finish? Parents, you have an obligation to help your students to clearly think through the decision to incur upwards of $100,000 in college debt. Students, you have a responsibility, you have an obligation to listen to your parents and to not just go to college because that's what everybody does. Truth number four, government is not our source. It's never been meant to be our source. The government's purpose is not to provide financially for its citizens, ever. In fact, the government doesn't even have the money to cancel the debt. It's just a transferring of it. It's just a a, a moving it around. The government has to borrow more money. They have to raise taxes on businesses, on citizens. Like I said, it's just 
a sideways movement. God has established government to punish evil and condone what is good, period. Romans 13 tells us this. And so this is why our American government was founded with limited powers, that the government would be limited and would remain within its bounds. The federal government, if it's not checked, will grow bigger and bigger and will become a monster that it was never intended to be. Historically, we know that governments are not content to stay within their God-given boundaries, and they always try to become God themselves, to where everyone would look to the government. And so college debt cancellation is just another one of many strategic moves by the government to become something that it never was intended to be. College debt cancellation will certainly cause many more people to view government as good, or a political party as good, or as their source. But as Christians, we have one source. As Christians, we function within the parameters of character and responsibility. And so, do not be deceived. Canceling college debt may earn brownie points with young socialistic Americans and at face value appear to be a glorious liberation of young people. However, canceling college debt is outside of the God-given role of the federal government. It's a big step towards the evil of socialism. It is a financially disastrous plan for the American taxpayer. And most important of all, it's a violation of God's word that holds the borrower responsible to pay. That's all for this week's Truth Talk, but there's more to be found on the subject in the best-selling book of all times, written over a span of 1,600 years on three continents and three languages by over 40 authors. The Bible is the truth. Amen.